Hi everyone, this is the Sacred Cow Tipper. Um, the subject today is going to be, you can't preach the gospel if you're poor. Uh, I heard three ministers on TBN uh, make this comment, and frankly, I'm kind of fed up uh, with a lot of this teaching. But uh, let's go to the Word of God, and uh, I want to show you what the Word of God says. It's one thing just to... Uh, hose the teaching that's out there that is unscriptural but it is a much better thing if you can show what the scriptures actually say so here we go you can't preach the gospel if you're poor let's uh, go to prayer right now father we come to you in the name of jesus and father i ask that this message not come across condemning but that it will bring forth life that it will bring forth repentance and that it will bring forth your love, your forgiveness, your long-suffering. And Father God, that the church would come to repentance. And that people would get back to following you. And that they would see the scriptures for what they really say, Father. We ask this in the name of Jesus. I ask that you anoint the words and the scriptures that go forth even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Alright, so here we go. My testimony of coming out of the movement. I came out of the prosperity teaching, okay? I was in it for at least 10 years. It wasn't the only thing I learned during that time, but it was prominent in many of the teachings. I did learn some good and some scriptural things amongst the Word of Faith movement. So I don't want to say, uh, like some out there might say, that everything they teach is heretical or unscriptural, okay? So I did learn some good things. Um, over, I'd say, a 10-year period, roughly. Okay. Some would, uh, some of these people are very good friends of mine still. And I love them dearly, and they're still good friends, and I hope they don't uh, chalk me off as not being a friend after seeing this video. Uh, because this is really from my heart, and I'm, that's why I'm going to quote Jesus an awful lot here. Okay. And some of these people would give the coat off their back for you. Uh, so let's not say that all of them are not Christian. We all need to search our hearts to see if we are in the faith. I don't care if you're Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Word of Faith, Full Gospel, whatever. We all have some teachings that are unscriptural. This just happens to be a very, very unscriptural, heretical teaching. And I've kind of held back for, I think, about 15 years now as far as discussing it but uh so let's go on all right <clears throat> anyhow i do feel at this point i have to expose this teaching for what it is on top of that i own about 180 of kenneth hagan senior and kenneth hagan jr's books that go way back to 1985 i literally bought the faith library back in 1985 i've read every one of those books some of those books I've read three to four times. So I know exactly what Kenneth Hagin taught, what Kenneth Hagin Jr. taught. Now they did teach on consecration and, and living for God, living holy lives also. Okay, I got the books here. Uh, I want to be fair. All right. All right. So anyhow, I'm going to say today what many have not said in the past 20 years okay I believe I am overqualified or should I say more qualified than most on speaking on this matter because the prosperity teaching is believed to have been stemmed uh, from Kenneth Hagin Singer and his son and I've read uh, like I said about 180 books up to 1985 Okay, there have been some books uh, from both of them since then, um, probably in the neighborhood of uh, 20 to 50 more books. Uh, I don't know a whole lot what they taught after that, but I'm going to kind of touch on some things. I just wanted to give you that background to show you that I am very well versed in the Word of Faith teaching, know what they taught. I know also the good things they've taught. So, uh, so keep that in mind. This is about getting people's hearts right and making sure we're in the faith all right 
Okay, many are speaking out against prosperity teachers, but were never really in the movement in the first place, and totally write off anyone in this movement as being unsaved, by which I think is a very unfair thing to do. Okay, um, so let's go on. You can be off in one area, and that will lead to more deception eventually if you don't repent of it. But most of, the, most of us have been taught some things that are not scriptural, that have nothing to do with money. Uh, so let's pray for these people in this movement, that God would open their eyes, but at the same time speak the truth and love to them, and also search our own hearts as to what is right and what is wrong. Okay, as far as this teaching goes. It looks like I'm going to have to probably do this teaching in three or four parts. Okay, but I'm going to try to do it in two. Two ten-minute parts. Okay, so here's, I'm going to put out a challenge. I challenge any scripture-twisting prosperity teacher out there to show me scripture to back up what they are teaching, that it is God's will for everyone to have riches without number one pulling the verses out of their context to have them say something they don't say, and number two, as to why you teach it so much, and number three, as to why you have telethons, if you believe what you teach, just speak it forth. That's what you teach. So why are you having telethons? Seems a little hypocritical to me. And number four, as to why you have so many people in your congregations that are in, in debt. And number five, why you didn't repent when in 1999, Kenneth Hagin Sr. rebuked you guys for teaching things he never taught. And number six, why there are just as many wealthy people who aren't saved or who are in denominations like the Baptists or Methodists who don't teach this doctrine or believe this doctrine. Okay, so that's my challenge. That's a pretty big challenge there. You got uh, six major things there that you need to deal with. Okay, that doesn't even, I guess I could add number seven. Number seven would be why this was not taught in the early church in the first two centuries. Uh, you, you just can't find it because it isn't scriptural. Okay, in the early uh, disciples of John, James, Peter and them, people like Polycarp and uh, Justin Martyr, people like that didn't believe this stuff. So why are you teaching it? Okay. The discussion and teaching, I already gave you a little insight, let me go over it again. I heard a very famous prosperity preacher, along with two other famous prosperity pe te preachers or teachers, uh, on TBN, the Take Your Bucks Network, make this comment. Hey man, I'm going to get some flack for saying that one. <laughs> the Take Your Bucks Network. I'm sorry I had to say it. TBN, I believe, started off right, and they got very wayward in the last 25, 30 years. But anyhow, okay, so I heard a very famous prosperity preacher, along with two other famous prosperity preachers on TBN, make this comment. You can't preach the gospel if you're poor. And that's the name of this discussion. These guys are just so ignorant of the word of God that it makes me want to puke. There's no easier way to say it. It makes me want to puke. What are they reading out of? The Make the make It Up As You Go Bible? The Create Your Own Jesus Bible version? Uh, you tell me. So let's compare that statement to scripture. You can't preach the gospel if you are poor. Most scripture isn't hard to understand. And Peter said that no scripture is of any private interpretation. So if anyone tells you they have a new revelation, you better watch out. Okay, and I take that from 2 Peter 1.20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Prophecy here is uh, pretty much uh, the teaching and preaching of the word of God. If you read the verse before it and the verse af after it, the whole word of God is prophetic. It was given to men of old by inspiration of the word of God. Yes, there are future prophetic things spoken of within the Word of God, but the entire Word of God is prophetic. Okay, <clears throat> now a few verses of Scripture that I want to prove my point. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video here. This is uh, part one, and we will go into part two since I don't want to uh, start this part and then have to start it again. Okay. So, end of this first part, we'll go into part two after this.